Hey everyone, Steven here, and today I'm reviewing the Scepter E275B-QPD168. As always, I'll be covering the specs first before getting into what I like and don't like about the monitor, and then I'll be covering the gray area, which are things I think people might want to know and consider before potentially buying this. With that being said, let's get into the specs. The Scepter E275B-QPD168 is a 27-inch 1440p IPS panel monitor with a 165Hz refresh rate and a 1ms gray-to-gray response time. This covers 100% of the sRGB color space and 92% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. This has a dynamic contrast ratio of 1 million to 1 and a static contrast ratio of 3000 to 1. This has a typical brightness of 450 nits and a peak brightness of 400 nits for HDR with true 10-bit color, meaning it has 1.07 billion color depth. The HDR doesn't have any local dimming, unfortunately, and the pixels per inch for the monitor is 109. This features blue light shift, overdrive, and has FreeSync Premium. For ports, you will find two HDMI 1.4, two DP 1.2, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. For adjustments, you have a 95 millimeter height adjustment, 15 degrees swivel to the left or to the right, and it, this can tilt five degrees forward and 15 degrees back. This is VESA mount compatible with a 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter pattern. Inside the box, you will find the power cable, DP cable, scepter screwdriver, user guide, and a warranty card, which is covered for one year. Last, this has two 2 watt speakers, which I usually do a sound test for, but these are quite powerful, even more so than the other Scepter monitors I've used that have the same wattage for their speakers. I'm wondering if this is due to the placement of them that's assisting them in getting this loud, but I just can't do these justice in a video without having to drop the sound low so it doesn't actually start to distort the sound in this video, but trust me, these are surprisingly powerful for only 2 watt speakers. At 50% power, they sound closer to the other monitors I've used at 75% to 100% power. Just a reminder to turn the volume up in the panel though if you do get this to 100% as it's usually turned to 50% by default. So now that I've covered these specs, let's get into some of the things you will find in the panel menu. I won't cover everything here, but let's start with the presets in the picture tab. For presets, you have user, movie, eco, FPS, RTS, and standard. I've personally been using movie and I think it looks great. Next in the color tab, you have the color temperature. For the color temperature, you have user, cool, normal, and warm. In user, you can adjust the red, green, and blue colors. And in the advanced tab of that, you can adjust cyan, magenta, and yellow also. In user mode, you can't adjust tint and saturation, by the way, just in cool, warm, and normal. You can adjust gamma, though, regardless of the color temperature mode. Next, we have the system tab, and first you can adjust overdrive. For overdrive, you have low, medium, high, and off. I've personally just left this off. Doing the UFO test, I've noticed this has more pronounced ghosting with the high setting. With low, it isn't really apparent, and it starts to become more visible with the medium setting. Next, you have FreeSync Premium, which is turned off by default, so you'll want to turn this on, and if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you can enable G-Sync compatibility in the NVIDIA control panel once FreeSync is turned on. Next, you have the back cover light, which just has the spectrum color cycle and no other colors or effects. And the last thing I want to cover here is you can turn HDR on or off in this setting. So now that I've covered these specs, let's get into what I like about this monitor, and to start, this thing looks incredible in person. I actually thought this was upscaling to 4K when playing Destiny 2 at first because it looks so good. I'm not big on smaller monitors, but this size is part of why I think it looks so good as it has the higher pixel density than the larger monitors I'm used to playing on. This might actually convince me to go back to a 27 inch monitor though, as this looks better than my 43 inch 4K Aorus monitor. 
Of course, that's the trade-off as this is a smaller screen with 109 pixels per inch, and the Aorus is a bigger monitor with 103 pixels per inch. The difference there though is that this is a 2K monitor versus a 4K monitor. The response time with this is faster than the Aorus also, and it's very apparent. The 1 millisecond grade to grade response time is quite noticeable in fast-paced games like first-person shooters and gives you a slight competitive edge. There is very minimal ghosting and black trailing here, and I actually prefer playing Halo Infinite on this monitor over the Aorus because the responsiveness just feels so much faster and is an overall smoother experience. Don't get me wrong though, the 43 inch Aorus is still a great monitor with a lot of screen which makes it incredibly immersive, we just have these differences between these monitors. Next, the color here is great out of the box and the presets are really good like the previous Scepter monitors I've reviewed. The bigger upside with this monitor though, outside of the colors, is the fact that this has a higher contrast ratio, more comparable with VA panels, which usually isn't the case with IPS panels. That was one of my main complaints with the Samsung G50A IPS monitor, is the contrast levels were lower at 1000 to 1 compared to the 3000 to 1 with the Scepter, and this difference is very noticeable. Again, this is comparable to what you will find with a VA panel, and it's paired with great colors and makes this look overall really good. Last, I was quite surprised with the speakers here as they get loud like I mentioned earlier. I actually don't use monitor speakers myself and prefer headphones, but it's always nice to have the option to use external speakers, and these will be plenty for most people. So no need to buy external speakers here unless you need more bass and control over the EQ of the sound. These do sound more flat, so some people might find that it's not to their liking, but with some software adjustments in Windows 10 or other programs, this might be something you can get to your liking. Now that I've covered the things I like, let's talk about the things that I don't like. The first thing is the menu buttons, which as I've mentioned in almost all of my videos, I prefer a single button, but I've used plenty of monitors with multiple buttons, and this may be my least favorite out of all of those. The layout for me is not very intuitive, so I find myself constantly hitting the wrong button. Next, the ports here are older, and although for most use cases it will be fine, it does come with bandwidth limitations, specifically with the HDMI ports, so for console players, that may be something to keep in mind. Now, playing on the Xbox Series X with this was fine, but it is a bit limited because of the HDMI port version. This only runs 1440p at 60Hz or 1080p at 120Hz. This doesn't have any upscaling to 4K, but to be honest, this looks just as good as 4K when playing at 1440p, since upscaling isn't the same as playing with native 4K. Although it does have these limitations, it still looked great when playing games, and I personally would play 1440p at 60Hz on this with no problem. I think if I put a monitor upscaling to 4K and this at 1440p side by side, you would be hard pressed to tell a big difference. The 120Hz refresh rate when downgrading to 1080p isn't worth it though in my opinion personally. If your intent is to use a console with this monitor though, you're going to find that you're limited here. I would suggest just finding something that has newer ports, maybe displaying that native 4K resolution, but those of course are going to be a lot more expensive. Last, text on this seems pixelated regardless of the size, which is a bit odd to me considering I've used other monitors with similar specs that don't have the same issue. This was only on PC by the way, this wasn't an issue that I found I was having on console. Now I've run ClearType in Windows to improve this and it did help some, but it still has a pixelated look to it which is more noticeable with smaller text, but is still a little visible with larger text. If it's skinny, if it's bold lettering, it's not there at all. I don't think this is a deal breaker by any means, but I was surprised to see this considering the pixels per inch and how good everything else looks. It's not really noticeable in games unless the text is super skinny. So if you plan on getting this for gaming, I would adjust this with clear type to help it, but if you do quite a bit of writing like I do, this might be an issue for you. Again, not a deal breaker, but more of an annoyance. Moving on, let's get into the gray area things, which are things some people may or may not like or even care about. 
The first thing here is going to be the cable management clip, which at first I was going to put it in the negative section, but I realized when messing with it that there is an upside to this here, as you can actually adjust this to the degree that you can if it just had a set hole or the other clip style cable managers that they have out there that are actually attached to the monitor stand. So I've personally moved mine up high so it bunches up all the cables up there instead of towards the middle of the stand like the images that Scepter actually shows on their website for this. So I personally actually like this. I didn't think I was going to like this. I thought it was something that I just didn't like the look. It is plastic, so it may be more prone to breaking easy. That may be an issue for some people, but once you have it set, you shouldn't really mess with it. But I actually found this to be more of an upside, but that is something that everybody can kind of weigh out for themselves if they like this style or not. Next, the HDR for this monitor works fine, but it shouldn't be a main draw for you to get this monitor. Playing Doom Eternal looked good in HDR, but if you're looking for top tier HDR with lots of local dimming zones, this won't be the monitor for you. I personally don't think HDR is in its prime just yet, and because of that, I end up only using it with certain games and not to watch content or to edit content or do any of that stuff on my PC. Top tier monitors with all of the bells and whistles for HDR cost thousands of dollars, and not every game or piece of content has the option to enable it, so for now it's a nice bonus if a monitor has it, but not something that I personally look for, and that's what it feels like with this monitor. It's a nice bonus, but not something that everyone will want or need. If you do though, it'll be okay for basic use. And last here, extra USB ports. I'm always going to ask for that if a monitor doesn't have it. That's something that I always personally really like if a monitor has that. But again, I know that not everybody needs that. They're not even going to use them. But if this had extra USB ports, this would be an even better monitor in my opinion. So in conclusion, this is a great IPS monitor with amazing colors, fast response time, high refresh rate, and a contrast ratio that makes this look better than other IPS panels I've used, all at a fraction of the price. Now Scepter lists this for $600 on their website, but they don't actually sell their monitors, it's just their suggested retail price, and at that price point it would rival the Samsung G50A, so I would give more scrutiny to this review, but you can get this for $300 on Amazon, which is such an incredible deal for what you get in my opinion. Cost should factor into these reviews, which I haven't covered as much in my previous reviews, but I've seen some other channels not take that into account and just tear a monitor apart as if it's the same price as the really expensive monitors they choose to compare it to. So again, for $300, I think this is an incredible deal with a lot to offer, and I would actually personally take this over the Samsung G5 if I didn't need the 1000R curve that that has over this. Now that is a different panel. The Samsung G5 is a VA panel. It's still 1440p. It has the 1000R curve. I don't think the colors look nearly as good as this, and this has a faster response time. I'm really just putting it in that category because it's close to the same price. If I look at the Samsung G50A, that's a $600 monitor. And with this, the price point, these aren't the same price points with this. So that has features that this does not have, but it's also double the price, something to consider with that. So I'll have a link for this in the description if you wanna actually pick this up. If you have any questions on this, let me know in the comment section below. If you like the video, hit the like button for me. If you want to continue to follow along with all my content, hit the subscribe button for me. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.